Hey guys, we want to work on a little bit on something called dimensional analysis. And this is just another way to solve problems, convert units, um, rather than just setting up a straight ratio. It uses a ratio concept, but um, extends it a little bit further and lets us do something a little tougher. Uh, you're going to have conversion factors on your sheet. But let's start with something that says, I want to convert 5 tons to kilograms. I don't know how many kilograms that is. So uh, what we do is we start by setting up the fact of what I start with. I know I have 5 tons. And I just put that over 1 just helps us get started. Instead of putting an equal sign, I'm going to actually multiply. And next, I'm going to find out some conversion that gets me from tons to kilograms. And if I look at my sheet, I do not see it there. But I do see something very handy. I know I can get from tons to pounds. And then from pounds to kilograms. Now here's what is very different. Normally if there's an equal sign, you line up the labels. We're going to go the other way. We put them one on top, one on bottom. So one ton is the same as 2,000 pounds. All right? Now that gets me to pounds, and I'll show why in a moment, but I need to get all the way to kilograms. So I look at my conversion chart, and I see that there are 2.2 pounds in one kilogram. Now, here's what's interesting. If you go through and work doing fraction work and doing what's called cross-reducing or cross-factoring, I have a tons on the bottom, a tons on top. They cross off. I have a pounds on top, a pounds on bottom they cross off. I can then just multiply fractions. I multiply everything across the top, which is 10,000. The bottom, the units are gone, but I do have this 2.2 that I have to worry about. And if I take 10,000 divided by 2.2, I will get the number of kilograms. Let me calculate that real quick. I didn't have a calculator in front of me. I get about 4,545 kilograms. All right, simple enough. Uh, all you do instead of lining up labels across, we multiply and we get our labels, one on top, one on bottom, and we can cross them out. And we can do this four or five times in a row if we need to. Um, let's convert something else. Let's convert um, let's do something really interesting. Seven weeks to seconds. In other words, in seven weeks, how many seconds are there? Well, I don't need to look up a lot of these conversions. I start with seven weeks. And I don't know weeks to second, but I do know this, that in one day, not one day, there are seven days in one week. Oops, forgot my one. So now my weeks will cross off. Um, I know there's 24 hours in a day, so in one day there's 24 hours. I know that in one hour there is 60 minutes. And I know that in one minute, there are 60 seconds. And look what I just did there. Do I have a weeks on top, weeks on bottom? Yep. Day, day, hour, hour, minute, minute. The only label I have left is seconds. I multiply across top and bottom. Uh, let's see, the top, it's going to be an awfully big number. 7 times 7 times 24, 
60, I think I did that right, let me double check here, 7 times 7 times 24 times 60 times 60. I believe if I did it right, I get 4 million 233,600 seconds. Uh, the bottom is just one, so there's nothing there to worry about. And there we go. That's how many seconds are in seven weeks. I'm going to throw one more out here that's probably more of a challenge than is even, um, even on the sheet. Let's go with this. I want to convert... Um, Let's see here. I want to convert, um, uh, let's go with, um, I'm going to go with 100 meters in 9.4 seconds. That's kind of close to the world record 100 meter dash time. But that doesn't mean much to me other than it's fast. I want it in miles per hour. All right, so I've got to convert both. This is metric, by the way. This is meters. This is miles per hour. I got to do two different kinds of conversions. Here we go. I have the rate already, 100 meters. I'll use M for meters, MI for miles. All right. Um, I need to go from meters to miles. I don't think I have that conversion, but I do think I have something that should give me, let's see. Oh, I can convert meters to kilometers. In um, There's a thousand meters in one kilometer. So that would take care of my M's. And I also know that a 1.61 kilometers is one mile. And notice again what I did. The meters are gone, kilometers are gone. I now have miles per second once I do all the math. But uh, I don't want it in miles per second. I want it in miles per hour. So let's get that seconds to be an hour. So there's 60 seconds in one minute. That should get my seconds to cross off. I know there's 60 minutes in one hour. And I believe I am done. I'm going to double check my labels. Uh, minutes are going to cross off. The seconds are going to cross off. And I am left with miles per hour. Awesome. Uh, we multiply across the top. I believe that is 36,000. Yep. The bottom's going to take a little calculator work. Um, 9.4 times 1,000 times 1.61 gives me 15,134. I think I left a zero off the top one. Yeah, it is. There should be another zero there. Sorry. And that divided by that gives me miles per hour. So I'm going to do that calculation real quick. 360,000 divided by, uh, oh, geez, I'm putting commas in bad place. The comma should go there. 15,134. And I get something around 23.8 miles per hour. Not a bad speed for a 100 meter dash. Okay, go ahead and, and uh, try some of the problems. This is probably harder than most of them.